as far as what's going on, first of all, you know, you've got to generate the magma. And again, if, if you look, there are certain areas where you're going to get magma being generated, typically at plate boundaries, where you have one plate rubbing against another. And what you're going to get there is just frictional heating. And a lot of times that frictional heating is just like rubbing your hands together. You can feel it warming up. That frictional heating is enough to melt the rock. Other places you can get it is any areas down deep below the surface where you may have a concentration of radioactive materials, particularly things like uranium, because as uranium breaks down, it gives off heat. And if there's enough of it down there, it will give off enough heat to melt the rock or a combination of the two. If you're on a plate boundary with radioactive materials, you've got enough of a heat source to melt the rock. Once you get the rock melted, well, then it starts migrating towards the surface because again, it's just a simple density thing. Hotter objects are less dense than cooler objects, so they're going to start rising towards the surface. They'll melt their way through the rock. They'll percolate along cracks and crannies and nooks and anything else, any way they can make their way up and eventually they'll come towards the surface. I mean, it's the path of least resistance, just like water moving, and they will move towards the surface until they get to a place where the pressure and the temperature can equalize. Now, sometimes that's below the surface and you never have an eruption. You'll just have cooling and crystallization below the surface, and other times it will continue to move on until it hits the Earth's surface.